Hello and welcome to Candid Conversation. A journey that formally began 13 years ago when the Kelkar Task Force recommended a comprehensive GST is coming to fruition. After the Constitution Amendment Bill on GST was finally passed uh, by the Rajya Sabha last week, to talk about GST and the roadmap to GST, we are joined by Revenue Secretary Hasmukh Adia. Welcome, Mr. Adia, to Candid Conversation, and many congratulations for that historic milestone in Parliament. Thank you very much, Munman. What crossed your mind uh, when that happened, when eyes had it in Parliament? Well, I would say I simply thought I was very lucky because this is something which hasn't happened entirely because of me or uh, this one. I'm there for the last one year, but this has been hanging fire for the last 10 years. And a lot of people have contributed to this constitutional amendment process. But that it happened in my time, I thought I was really lucky about it. This happened with me in DFS also, in the Department of Financial Services. There was an insurance amendment bill which was pending since 2008. Mm -hmm. And it got cleared when I was there. So I thought I was lucky there also. But you are a lucky mascot perhaps for the government. But Mr. Adhya, a lot of focus is also going to shift to the GST Council very soon once it is constituted. And there are a lot of tough policy choices before the Council. What is that one, two or three issues uh, that you would uh, think would be very hard for consensus to be arrived at? Well, in fact, the way the constitutional amendment bill is designed, it is actually made in such a way that the main decision-making body is the GST Council. All major decisions relating to the implementation of GST will have to be taken in the GST Council. Uh, there are many issues which need to be sorted out, but I had already mentioned a couple of them in that uh, press conference. The smaller ones are the issue of uh, what should be the exemption limit, what should be the compounding limit, etc. But among the bigger ones are three. One is the issue of dual control, cross empowerment for removing the possibility of a dual control. The second thing is the rate structure for GST. And the third thing is the actual law, the model law. Model law has already been put into the public domain and we have got so many representations by various sections of the industry and trade that now we need to look at each one of those and finalize our comments on them and then put it up before the GST Council to take a view. Consensus has eluded most of those major things that you pointed out, be it the tax uh, rate or the dual control issue. Do you expect a consensus to be arrived at in a matter of three months before the next set of bills are presented in Parliament and state legislatures? We are optimistic because having missed the opportunity to implement such a reform measure for the last 10 years, now is the time when we cannot lose any more time. And so we think that all the states and centre will put their best together and we will be able to resolve quite a few of these issues. But that's something which uh, can only be uh, decided by the states and the centre. So I, I, I'm, I mean, I'm hopeful, we are optimistic, but ultimately what is the time taken in resolving these issues is going to decide the future. Let's take up those issues one by one. The CEA-led uh, panel has recommended that the standard GST rate should be in the range of 17 to 19 percent and the committee is of the opinion that beyond 19 percent it could have an inflationary impact. You have earlier said that uh, it will be premature to say at this stage that that standard rate would be 18 percent. States seem to be veering around the 22 percent figure. What according to you can be a reasonable range as far as the standard GST rate is concerned? Well, I don't think I'll be able to give you any number now because we have to do the calculation of the latest revenue base of the state and the central uh, st states and the central government. Will that be based on uh, previous fiscal figures? Yes, we will have to take the latest figures of revenue of both uh, central government and state government. Many things have changed since this uh, base was calculated in 13-14. The figures which are there in the CAS report as well as NIPFP report are both based on 13-14 figures. That is one. Secondly, we also need to now calculate what will be the compensation requirement for states. And that calculation will again depend on the rate structure that we decide. So it is crow. It is actually locking each other. So whether we decide the, uh, where we decide the rates first, then only we'll be able to know the compensation requirement. And also the compensation requirement will decide what will be the ideal rate we can afford to have. 
So I don't think any number can be discussed now. It Not a be, number, but a broad range, uh, perhaps? Well, the, if you take the NIPAP report, NIPAP report has already indicated 22% as the standard rate, while CA's report is indicating 17 to 19% as the standard rate. So hopefully it, should, uh, it can be decided by the GST Council what it wants to have. But at present, the tax incidence on majority of the items are in the range of 27% because, uh, as I mentioned, about 62% of states' revenues come from the standard rate items and their standard is 14.5%. 85% of the central government's revenue come from the standard rate and our standard rate is 12.5%. So put together, it is a 27% burden on most of the commodities. Now, to what extent can we bring them down is a question, but we do need to bring them down. Why? Because we have to now account for the fact that there will be no cascading effect and the states will be able to, uh, the manufacturers will be able to take credit for uh, excise duty and VAT. It means that GST credit will be flawless without any barrier. Uh, there are certain exemptions or yes. uh, certain items which are outside the ambit of the GST. To that yes. effect, there would be cascading impact of taxes, isn't it? It won't have a cascading effect. Exemption items will reduce our tax base uh, to that extent. Mm -hmm. So the decision on what items to keep in the exemption list will also affect the rate structure that we decide. Smaller the list of exempted items, the lower can be the rate. But if we keep many items in the exemption list, then the rate uh, of uh, GST may have to be higher in order to compensate the states and the centre for the current uh, level of revenue. Coming back to the standard GST rate that we were talking about, the CEA panel, as I said earlier, has said that there could be an inflationary impact if it goes beyond 19%. There's an estimate that says that the inflation can go up by around 0.7% if uh, the standard rate is arrived at at 22%. But since you are telling us that the tax incidence already, as far as 70% of revenues of the center and state combined are concerned, is 27%, do you expect any inflationary impact if that rate is fixed to be 22%? Also given the fact that we have already set a target of 4% plus minus 2% for five years for inflation. Well, we respect the target of uh, CPI inflation which has been set now, 4% plus and minus 2%. All we need to do in the GST Council is to segregate those items of uh, consumption which are forming the CPI basket of commodities, the consumer price index basket of commodities. As long as we take care to see to it that the incidence of GST on these items is not much, it is not at least exceeding what it is at, at present then I don't think we need to worry about the inflation as far as that part is concerned. So at 22% one should not worry about inflation? No, point is key. it's a question of uh, uh, creating a structure of rate in which the CPI uh, commodity basket is not affected too much and then we can control inflation. You also talked about dual control. Uh, at what stage is the debate between the centre and states on this currently and uh, what would be the centre's point of view when this issue is discussed in the GST Council? Well, the states are very correct when they say that we do not want uh, small traders to be under the burden of a dual control. Certainly, it's a desirable objective that we should avoid dual control uh, because it's not a good idea that a small trader is uh, under the scrutiny of both the state and centre and they get a separate notice from central government as well as state government and they comply with two different authorities. They file two different appeals in case if they lose. So this is not desirable. So we are on board as far as the objective is concerned. But we have suggested a methodology of cross empowerment. How will that work? Our suggestion is that we could First of all, draw up a list of risk parameters. Having drawn up a list of risk parameters, we can draw up certain cases for scrutiny. We can decide uh, in the beginning of the year or even in the GST Council forever that the number of scrutiny cases, just as in income tax, we are only taking 1% of the total assessments filed in scrutiny. So in GST also we can decide that we will take 5% cases under scrutiny. And then state and centre, they draw up a list of scrutiny cases 
and then we divide the workload among ourselves out of the cases which are drawn up in the beginning of the year the commissioner of uh, central government and the commissioner of the state government they can sit together and divide the workload and then it is possible to authorize the other government to take all action in respect of central government and similarly vice versa so we can cross empower each other to undertake the complete scrutiny of certain cases which are pre selected is dual control thus needed to minimize tax evasion to a large extent it is required because there is a possibility of large number of traders and businessmen evading taxes so the main benefit of gst should come in form of uh, spreading the tax net and removing tax evasion and so that objective also cannot be overlooked but yes dual control is certainly not desirable and we would like to remove the dual control but there is a methodology of doing it and we will work it out with the state governments there are also worries about whether the tax rate would increase on services uh, what is uh, your view on whether the tax rate would go up or whether it would be the same more or less or whether it can come down in certain circumstances and what will be the structure will there be a single standard rate for goods and services or do we expect a slab structure in services just as is the case with goods well certainly uh, less than 3 slabs of rates are not possible in the current uh, in fact there'll be four because for gold jewelry we will have to have a separate slab for goods you're talking about yes. for goods yes for services of course there will have to be only one rate we cannot have different services being put in different uh, baskets but uh, uh, all the services may have to be put in any one of this slab you know in order to uh, uh, have ease of doing business uh, but what that rate will be one is not able to predict at the moment there might be a marginal increase in the service tax but certainly we cannot afford to have a phenomenal increase in the service tax now because 53% of our gdp is coming from services uh, now so, so will there be a single rate for goods and services standard rate in the gst there'll be three or four slabs but within those three or four slabs this, all the services may have to be kept in only any one, one slab a lot of people are saying that if the service tax goes up from say 14% to 18% or 20% it would be too much of a burden of service tax on the financial services sector on banking on insurance on mutual fund on all other products hotel business etc but if you uh, look at it uh, there is a positive side to it in the sense ki the overall incidence may not go up because right now when you are paying service tax if there are any goods which you are using in providing that service the vat that you have paid on those goods is not available to you as input tax credit in the service tax that you are paying now in the new regime there will be a single tax it is a goods and services tax so whatever gst you have paid on the goods that you have purchased in order to give those services that will be available to you as input tax credit so there will be much less burden of service tax overall although on paper it may appear that 14% has become 18% or 20% whatever but actually because you can now avail of input tax credit on goods the actual incidence may be almost equal or maybe less how will those invoices look when they come when you go to a restaurant to eat food when the phone bills come well normally igst will apply to b2b transactions only because when you are sending your goods to some other state you are probably sending it to a wholesaler normally but it can also happen that there'll be a b2c transaction of interstate uh, movement of goods so it will be a single uh, uh, tax you know either it says gst now gst will include both cgst and sgst so whether the bill will exactly depict uh, in what form we will have to decide about it but as far as the consumer is concerned he will remember that this is my overall gst rate now what person out of it is going to whom is none of his business the computer will sort it out okay has the center worked out any estimate for revenue buoyancy after gst roll out well the central government has not done any such assessment but the committee uh, chaired by ca has uh, given a estimate of the revenue base of the country going up by 2 lakh crore in the best possible scenario optimistic scenario and in the alternative scenario by 1 lakh crore so that is the revenue base so on that revenue base 
the if the tax rate is say average 18 percent or 20 percent or 22 percent that much will be the gain to the country that is what they have estimated in my view yes this efficiency gain will come the buoyancy will come because of better compliance because of uh, auto compliant nature of the gst design but then this benefit yes it is self compelling you know you cannot avoid tax once you are in the chain of goods and services and there is also incentive that is attached to it there is an incentive attached to it because if you buy goods which is not tax paid then you will have to take the whole burden of tax so you would buy it from a dealer who has paid tax and given it to you rather than from a dealer who has not paid the tax and given it to you so but my view is that this benefit of efficiency gain or the buoyancy will come over a period of 5 years it it is it is not possible that in one year itself we realize this revenue so gain. does that mean that uh, there could be a spike in fiscal deficit in uh, the immediate uh, term because uh, the center will also be compensating uh, states that lose revenue on account of this transition to gst for 5 years so uh, in the medium term are we expecting revenue buoyancy whereas in the short term we expect greater fiscal burden on the center well the main uncertainty will be in the first two years only you know main uh, will be in the first two years so uh, once we see stability of revenue then there is no problem now in the first two years number one we have a burden of compensation to be given and also the uncertainty about what compensation we will have to give to which state so we'll have to correctly estimate that how much the manufacturing states for the states which are likely to lose how much will they lose so that correct estimation has to be made the second thing is that there will be a mechanism to arrive at that yes, compensation yes yes we will we will work out some mechanism the main loss will come to manufacturing states out of removal of 2% cst because that 2% cst will go so whenever there is an interstate transaction whatever amount they used to get outside from outside state which was not uh, available for wet credit is this 2%. Now that is the main loss which will uh, occur to the manufacturing state. So we'll have to calculate exactly how much will that be. And if we keep the rate uh, uh, very low initially in order to have better acceptability of GST and in order not to increase the inflation, then also there is a lurking danger that the fiscal deficit of government of India will go up and then we may have again inflationary effect which is coming out of that uh, fiscal deficit going up so perhaps that's so. a hint that don't expect 18% at this stage uh, because uh, there could be a fiscal uh, deficit uh, spike and that could lead to inflationary pressures but you talked about manufacturing states uh, where, when do you expect uh, them to uh, come back to their present revenue levels over a period of time one good thing is that the states which are manufacturing states are also high consumption states by and large because the GDP of that state is very good and uh, they have all the rich people who are living there. So we would expect that the consumption of this state is also very high. Like Gujarat, Yes, so their own consumption is very high. Mm -hmm. So they will get more taxes because the consumption is also very high in those states. The manufacturing states are also the rich states and the consumption pattern is also very high there. So they will get taxes out of consumption. This is a consumption based tax. So the more you consume in your state, the more is the tax you will get. The main gainers will be those states which are, which are service states, uh, you know. So Maharashtra, for example, has got a high service tax uh, possibility of getting more service tax. Karnataka will have a possibility of getting more service tax. Tourism states like Goa, they will gain quite a bit because they would have services, you know. So net-net, uh, there shouldn't be much of an impact on these manufacturing states? Over a period, yes. But initially, it's very difficult to estimate, you know, so. Okay. But as far as your budget estimates in the next uh, financial year is concerned, uh, do you expect uh, your targets to be higher than what you will achieve in this financial year because of the immediate uh, impact that you'll feel by transition to GST? Well, as far as the union budget is concerned, we have got two parts to it. Uh, rather three parts to it now one will be the direct taxes the income tax the second will be the GST and the third will be custom duty so as far as custom duty and uh, direct taxes are concerned they are not going to be part of GST so we'll continue to get that revenue but excise and service tax will go in place of which GST will come and so GST estimates we will have to do it correctly at the same time we may have to 
enhance our target of income tax collection for the next year in order to sort of obviate any possibility of uh, losses being made in GST. But and are you as accounting it is, it is for a progressive step, you know, to go in for more direct tax is a progressive step. It Absolutely. is a progressive taxation. Because indirect tax is seen as a regressive tax. But are you accounting for that possibility that uh, your targets may have to be lowered for the time being as far as indirect tax is concerned? And maybe you can target for higher revenue from direct tax in the next budget. We will have to account for that uncertainty in the budget because even after making the correct estimate, even after having designed a correct slab, uh, there is always a possibility of, uh, you know, losses coming or whatever. So, we will have to account for it. Okay, on that note, uh, we have to take a break. You are watching Candid Conversation. I guess this week is Revenue Secretary Hasmuk Adia. Muthoot Finance, Bharat ka number one Bharose Man Finance Diversified Brand, jo aapko deta hai Bharat ka sabse bahia gold loan, yani sabse bahia bias dar, sabse adhik loan rashi, ghar baithe online gold loan ki suvidha, online interest ka bhuktaan kare, call kare 1-800-120-2838. In dino, updated resume rakhna behad zaruri hai, here's mine, Praful Kumar, Major Praful Kumar, Para Special Forces, 3 saal hostile zone mein, tough tha. JNK में स्पेशल सर्विस कुछ नए दोस्त बनाए कॉम्बैट फ्री फॉल स्पेशलिस्ट बलिदान के लिए तैयार जैसा आप देख सकते हैं आई वेयर माय हार्ट ऑन माय स्लीव एंड माय रेज्यूमे ऑन माय यूनिफॉर्म व्हिच अदर कंपनी लेट्स यू डू दैट हम है भारत के सबसे एक्साइटिंग वर्कप्लेस और हम दे रहे हैं आपको एक ऑफर भारतीय सेना आम नहीं ये जिंदगी देखिए बच्चा बीमार भी हो तो भी उसे टीके के लिए हर बार ले जाइए अगर किसी वजह से दूसरी जगह भी जाना पड़े तो भी इसका ये जो कार्ड है इस कार्ड को साथ ले जाए और टीके जरूर लगवा पांच साल सात बार छूटे ना टीका एक भी बार Muthoot Finance, Bharat ka number one bharose man finance diversified brand, jo aapko deta hai Bharat ka sabse bahia gold loan, yani sabse bahia bias dar, sabse adhik loan rashi, ghar baithe online gold loan ki suvidha, online interest ka bhuktaan kare, call kare 1-800-120-2838. People think techies are chained to their desks. Not me. I run UAVs. You know, drones. I have to say, it's pretty awesome. I grew up playing video games, and who would have thought that'll help me defend my country? Not my mom at least. We get there first, and see what's around the corner, so that there are no surprises for the rest of the team. We go everywhere, working with the latest and the best technology, but no Facebook. We are India's most exciting workplace, and we are making you an offer. The Indian Army. Live a life less ordinary. Welcome back. You're watching Candid Conversation. Our guest this week is Union Revenue Secretary Hasmuk Adia. Mr. Adia, a deadline has been set by the centre of April 1, 2017 for rollout of GST, but a lot of work needs to be done. There's a legislative framework uh, that the government is uh, working on, and there are infrastructure-related issues uh, that the government is trying to sort out, and beyond that, there are administrative issues as well. Are you confident uh, that that uh, deadline will be met? Is that a realistic deadline? Well, we are quite optimistic about it and uh, we do wish that all the states cooperate with us and we are able to resolve most of the issues in the meeting of GST Council. Uh, passing of bill is the thing which is not likely to take much of a time because that way that can happen in the November session, December session. A lot will depend on how fast the GST Absolutely, Council decides. Yeah. But even if it doesn't happen by December, maybe by February when we start the budget sessions of most of the states and centre, that time also the bill can uh, come in the assembly or the parliament. But the main uh, issue is uh, how long will the GST council uh, take in threshing out the major issues. And that is where we will need more time of the state finance ministers to come to Delhi more often and uh, finish this Meet agenda. More often. 
One thing I've noticed uh, in your uh, presentation and that is that when you were referring to the challenges during your presentation on a GST rollout, you mentioned nearly all the issues that are confronting the GST council. Change management was referred to as a separate issue but not as one of those challenges. So does that mean that you're absolutely confident that 60,000 officers will be trained in GST laws and IT and uh, there will be an outreach uh, program for all the stakeholders and industry well within time to meet the deadline of April 1? Well, as far as the actions which are within the control of the government, we would have better control on it. So, training 60,000 officers is simply not an issue. We can easily do it. But the main thing is in uh, reach out uh, to the trade. We will need the cooperation of all the trade bodies, industry bodies also. And we would appeal to all the organizations which are working for all the trade associations and chambers of commerce, etc., to also come forward for their own uh, level of uh, intervention. And they can organize a number of meetings, they can call experts who are either from the government or from outside, and they can explain everything to the trade and business. From the industry point of view, will filing uh, returns or registrations be hassle-free in the GST regime? It would be very, very hassle-free because at present uh, the people are expected to pay different taxes in different chalans and there are different periodicities and there are different books to be kept etc but now there'll be only one tax to be paid gst registration process for all dealers of excise service tax and uh, vet the registration database has actually already been received by the gst and the company which is doing the it backbone and that data which has been received from all the states, the VET uh, dealer database, that has also been cleaned up and the latest details have been obtained from the various dealers. So those people will straight away get a registration number without applying for it. So the data will be auto-migrated. As far as new, registr uh, new people are concerned, the registration is a simple affair of three days and the moment you apply online and if you do not hear from government within three days, it is understood that it is deemed re registered and the computer itself will generate a GST IN number and give it to you. While the indirect tax regime is being simplified, how will tax administration change? Will the functioning of the CBEC be recast? Absolutely, we will have to do a lot of recasting of the role of CBEC. CBEC will have GST function apart from custom function. So there will have to be apart from custom divisions which are already there, the excise and service tax divisions will have to be merged into GST divisions. So fortunately, of course, right now, except in the metropolitan cities where the commissionerate for excise is separate from commissionerate for service tax, in all other cities, there is a combined uh, office which is looking after both excise and service tax. So it may not be much of a problem for us. Are you happy that uh, there would be revenue buoyancy in the medium term or are you worried, uh, Mr. Adia, that uh, there could be revenue losses in the short term that you will have to face? No, I am not worried. We are only trying to do the best possible professional job to ensure that without any damage to our revenue, we are able to implement this uh, tax in a very smooth and uh, effective way. That is the only thing we are now focusing on. It's not a worry, but it is our focus now. Are you certain that the GST experiment will be as successful as it has been envisaged? It is something which is desirable for the country. It is something which the country could have done 15 years ago or maybe 25 years ago because there are countries which are having GST for the last so many years. But we missed that opportunity and something which is desirable one has to do and I think the country has no option but to go in for GST now. All the very best uh, Hasmuk Adia for this challenge in front of you. May the country have a very very simplified indirect tax regime sooner than later. Thank you for having joined Thank us on Candid much. Conversation. Thank you. Thank you.